Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is two things. But the bottom line goal is how to double, triple, or quadruple your sales. Now, that may seem like it's far out, but I'm going to give you examples of, of exactly how you can do it, how you can make it work. Um, you want to make sure you take a lot of notes here. And what's the beautiful thing about we're going to, what we're going to talk about here is you're going to do this without spending another penny on marketing. So Robin has so many great marketing tools for you, and they're outstanding, and you've got to use them. But here is the really cool thing, and I'm going to repeat it over and over and over again. Sales is where it's at. Sales, closing the sale, not generating the lead. We can generate leads all day long, but we want to close the sale. Because check this out. Every time you increase your closing percentage, you give yourself an instant pay raise, right? You increase your closing percentage by 10%, you give yourself a 10% pay raise at no cost. So that's what we're going to talk about here today, and we're going to talk about one-to-one -one selling and one-to-many selling. So who else here, though, does want to attract more leads, A-list quality leads? Give me an oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Who wants to attract higher quality leads who come pre-qualified to you? Give me an oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Who wants to engage more clients? Give me an oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And bottom line, this is kind of a dumb question, but let's ask it anyway. Who wants to make more money? Yeah, yeah I thought so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. I like it. We got oh, yeahs. We got booms going. We got everything going. So here's the big secret. The big secret is what I've already told you. It's to close more sales. When you close more sales, you make more money. And so today, in the next, oh, hour and a half, I'm going to share with you um, some major secrets. I'm going to give you actual scripting that you can use right away, like starting on Monday. So first, we're going to talk about how you can attract super high-quality leads, super high-quality leads in mass in mass with one-to-many selling, okay? And you may not understand what one-to-many selling is yet, but you will in a minute. The next thing is how to convert those leads into really great clients without using old-fashioned sales techniques that you hate. So there's not going to be any, I'm not going to teach you like 100 manipulative closes or anything like that, right? I don't want to turn you guys into salespeople at all. But I do want to increase your sales. And so the system that I'm going to share with you is all about how you can maintain your level of professionalism and your team's level of professionalism. And you're going to want to share this. If you, how many of you guys have uh, sales, salespeople? You're not doing it yourself. Raise your hands really high so I can see. Okay, cool. All right. So what the heck is one-to-many selling? So one-to-many selling is defined as either speaking in front of a group or doing a webinar, okay? Speaking in front of a group or doing a webinar. Just by, by a show of hands, just by a show of hands, just um, since we're talking about selling here, how many of you think that um, I'm going to try to sell you something uh, today? Raise your hand if you think I'm going to try to sell you something today. Raise it high. Okay, don't worry. I won't disappoint you. I promise. Okay. <laughs> I promise, okay? Uh, actually, what will happen is I want to sell you on becoming really great at this stuff, but I am going to offer you something at the end. All of you should take it, and when you get the feeling, and you will during the presentation, that you know that you want it, I strongly recommend that you get up and you go to the back of the room. There's people in the back of the room to take care of it because I guarantee you at the end of this, Everyone's going to want what I have to offer, and they're going to go to the back of the room, and it's going to be chaos, all right? So just remember that. Once you get the feeling, just go up and go to the back of the room. Okay, so why? Why, why are we going to do webinars? Why are we going to do speaking to sell? What are the huge advantages of it? First, first thing is when you speak, whether it's on a stage, all right, or whether it's online with a webinar, you are immediately perceived as the go-to expert because most people don't do it and because you have an authority. When you're standing up in front of a group, again, either virtually or in person, you are instantly perceived as the go-to expert because who, who speaks? Experts, right? Experts are speakers. 
Now, if you're deathly petrified of speaking, you have two choices, okay? One is to get over it and get rich, okay? The second is to just do it online, to record a webinar and put it up on your website, right? And I'm going to share with you the exact structure of how to do that. I'm not holding anything back here today. The next thing is when you speak, you attract super high-quality leads, super high-quality leads, because they know you, they like you, they trust you, because they've just seen you speak. The authority level that you get from speaking is huge. The leads are a much better quality than any other lead that you can get. Way better than direct mail. Way better than television advertising. Because they see you, they hear you, they can interact with you. And by the way, they can do that online now as well. And the beautiful thing about webinars is webinars provide you with automatic lead generation. Because you can have your webinar, which plays automatically 24 hours a day, seven days a week, delivering your very, very best sales pitch, your very best presentation. Because you can just keep doing it over and over and over again until you have it. So think about if you had a salesperson that delivered the exact pitch you wanted them to deliver every single time, did it perfectly, never asked for a, never asked for a vacation, never asked for an increase in commission, right? And just started pumping out sales 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That'd be pretty cool, yes? Give me an oh yeah? And that's what, this, that's what a webinar is. Now, you're not going to make the sale on the webinar. So when I mean the sale, I mean they're going to call you or they're, they're going to book a consultation online. But they're pre-qualified. They're pre-framed. They already believe in you. They already know, like, and trust you. It is so, so powerful. Okay. So now to make this work, though, you need a presentation, okay, that produces appointments. Right? We have to have a presentation that produces appointments. So we can go in there, or our team can go in there, and we can actually close the sale. So I'm going to give you the exact structure. So you're going to want to take really, really copious notes. Now, Mike introduced me a little bit. I've known Robin uh, forever. And I'm not like Mike Aguilero did. I'm not going to go deep into my story. But I do want to give you a little bit of a background, just so you understand why you should be listening to me. Um, the first thing is I do, I do this. I don't just teach it, right? I actually do this stuff. This is how I put food on my table, right? So what you're going to get is up-to-date, practical information that actually works. So like I said, I'm not going to tell you my entire story, but I like to start when I was eight years old. So <laughs> seriously, when I was eight, and we're going to go sequentially, eight, nine, ten, it's going to be fantastic. Okay, aren't you glad you came? Yeah, you are. I can tell you're fired up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so when I was eight years old, I had a dream. And my dream was to be a professional magician. That's right, a magician. And my parents thought that that was kind of cute when I was eight. But they didn't think it was so cute when I was 18. And they said to me things like, you're, you're going to have to get a real job. Right? You're not going to make any money. Right? You're not going to be able to support yourself. All that kind of stuff. And my guess is your family members might have said the same thing to you when you said, hey, I'm going to go out on my own and I'm going to start my own business. <laughs> they still do, he says. No matter how successful you are, right? They're still like, you know, you sure? My, I remember my dad said, work for IBM. Work for IBM, right? So I didn't do it for the longest time. I was in radio advertising sales, and I was like the worst radio advertising salesperson on the planet. I mean, I was so bad at it. I, I had no training at all, and without training, you know, we're, we're not going to be good at it. I was so bad at it that I used to go, this is embarrassing, in like sit in a movie theater and like watch a movie instead of going out and doing cold calling. It was terrible. Um, I got a job in Atlanta um, at a company called Magic Masters. 
So I got out of the radio thing, got a job at Magic Masters. Here's what our job was at Magic Masters. These were magic stores in really nice convention hotels. And our job was to draw in a crowd of people just like you. So there would be a, you know, let, let's say there's a, a, we had a magic shop here. So at, when you guys are on breaks and stuff, my job would be to stand in the shop, draw you in, do a little mini show for you, and then sell you the secrets. Sell you way overpriced magic tricks. So basically, we sold overpriced magic tricks to unsuspecting conventioneers. That's what the business was. But that's when I started to learn to get up in front of people and actually sell. And then I got fired from that job because my, uh, the, the owner of the business discovered I was very entrepreneurial and I wanted to open up my own shop. Opened up my own shop at Christmas time, had no money, put it on credit cards, uh, in the mall. Had a card in the mall. And so now we were pitching magic, overpriced magic tricks to unsuspecting moms for the holiday season. And we actually made money. My partner and I, who was a chef, so I thought, hey, this is perfect, teach a chef how to pitch, so taught him, we made money, and now I think I am an entrepreneurial genius. This shit is easy. I can't believe I haven't been in business for myself. So a smart man, what would he have done with the profits? Because I made more money in those two months doing the cart than I made as an entire year as a magician. Excuse me, as, as a, a demonstrator of magic tricks, at the, at working for someone else. What would a smart person do? So tell me, what would you do if you were successful in this little business? What would you do? Open more, maybe see if the concept works after Christmas. No, no, not Dave. Not Dave. Dave decides to buy a karate school. Yep. Oh, well, I did have six months of karate under my belt, and so I felt I was fully qualified uh, for this, and this was a nightmare. This was the lowest part of my life. I was literally making no money. And when I say I was making no money, I was making no money. Um, I found myself uh, $80,000 in debt, and it was a nightmare. We got out of that, and I discovered marketing. I went to a seminar one of those big success rally seminars because I thought that I needed motivation. I thought I needed motivation. And it was either now I was gonna live my dream of being a professional magician or, or I was gonna get a real job and I knew that would be it. And a, like working for someone else like, felt like death to me. So I went to this motivational rally seminar. I think Norman Schwarzkopf was the, key, was, the, was the keynote speaker. Zig Ziglar was on the stage. And there was this guy who I never heard of who was the last speaker. After Schwarzkopf leaves, everyone's getting up, everyone's leaving. And this guy walks out on stage, a guy by the name of Dan Kennedy. Never heard of this guy. I'm getting up to leave because I'm motivated. Right? I think I'm good. And so Dan says, sit down. You're just going to get caught in Atlanta traffic. Watch my presentation. And so some people sat down. I was one of them. And he starts talking about marketing. You see, I thought that if I just got really good at what I did, I would be successful. So if I just got really good at my craft, I would be successful. Oh, wait a minute, dude. Dude, where are you going? Wait, dude, wait. You're, wait, where, what are you doing, man? You're going to miss, like, the best part of this thing. Whoa, hey, wait, wait. What? You're, you're taking off? <laughs> what? What's going on, man? I mean, this is, like the key, this is like the key part of the story, my man. They're filming it for me. Oh, yeah, but you're going like, to miss like so, so much excitement. So just hurry up and come on back, though. Okay, okay, come on back. Okay, cool. All right. So anyway, um, hi. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, are you guys going to be like really pissed off if I come down here? No, sound crew? Okay, because I like to walk amongst people. Okay, so uh, I went to, and Dan starts talking about this, this magnetic marketing stuff, and I'm taking notes like crazy, right? I don't, I'm so dumb that I don't know that Dan's trying to sell me something. I, I think the dude's trying to teach me something, right? So I'm taking notes, 
And then he lays the bomb on me about what the price was for the thing. $279. And I'm like, oh, can't do it. Can't do it. And I left. I left without buying that product. And on my drive home in my beat-up car with my windows rolled down in the Atlanta heat because my, uh, the, the windows were broke, the air conditioning was broken, and I didn't have the money to fix it, I knew I made a mistake. And I went home and I t uh, told my wife, and I said, I, this was the thing. This marketing thing, this selling thing is the thing. I should have got it. But it was two seventy nine, dollars And she looks at me and says, $279? We're $80,000 in debt. What's another $279 going to do? <laughs> right? Don't worry, it's getting better as to why you should listen to me because now people are going, wait a minute, this is this guy not too bright. That boy up there ain't too smart. Okay. So I ended up buying it, and most importantly, I ended up implementing it. I locked myself in a room. And the reason I bought it is I remember something that Jim Rohn said. Who, know, who knows who Jim Rohn is, okay? If you don't, look up Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. Jim, Jim Rohn was Tony Robbins' mentor. Tony Robbins actually sold tickets to Jim Rohn seminars. So Jim Rohn had a saying. He said, successful people invest in themselves and their education. Successful people invest in themselves and their education. And obviously, one of the reasons I love you guys is because that's what you do. That's why you're here. And so I bought the program, I implemented the program, I went from doing three shows a month to averaging 25 shows a month in less than 90 days. In my fourth month, I did 57 shows. In a year, I had paid off all of my debt, I had bought a new house, I had bought a new car, I was living my dream. I then started speaking on stages, telling my story, and other business owners started asking me for my advice because they understood that marketing is marketing is marketing, selling is selling is selling. So, for example, now I don't perform magic anymore, but let me just, let's just show. How many of you guys need to generate leads? Raise your hand if you need to generate leads. Okay, so did I. How many of you guys need to uh, close those leads, turn those leads into clients? Raise your hand. Yeah, so, so did I. How many of you actually have to go out and perform the service in order to get paid? Raise your hand. Yeah, so did I. How many of you wanted to get referrals and repeat business? So, it was, so smart business owners understood that just because I wasn't in their business, I could help them. And so that's how I started getting into the business that I'm in now. And so that's what that says. I work with real business owners. In fact, I've got a couple um, uh, clients here. Howard, are you here? Howard, Howard Globus. There he is. There's Howard. Hey, Howard. Let's hear it for Howard. Okay. Howard's been to, has bought like a ton of my stuff, been to my events. Uh, is Barbara here? Barbara? Barbara, yell out. I can't, Bar Bar Barbara, you're not here? Hey, uh, Karen, my wife Karen here. Email Barbara, tell her to get here. Okay, so um, I work with real business owners who demand results. So what you're going to get is practical information. Mike told you some of my results are legendary. I've closed $575,000 from the stage in 45 minutes. I produced uh, seminars. Um, uh, webinars that have produced $1.5 million in automated sales. Uh, I've done multiple six-figure speeches. Uh, but more importantly than what I've done is what my clients have done. Here's someone who does seminars. She was really struggling. She was closing about 30% of the room. Uh, she now closes 75% of the room. Sean Buck, I didn't have time to put it into the presentation, just told me the other day, after years of listening to me, he begrudgingly took my advice, changed his presentation to the format that I'm going to share with you. And he went from uh, closing 40% of the room to closing 80% of the room on booking appointments with him. So also, can you just play uh, the video now, guys, just very quickly? And then we're going to get right into the system. Hey, this is Vance Morris with Deliver Service Now, and I need to give a huge shout out to uh, my mentor and friend, uh, Dave D. You see, I just got back from an event uh, last week, 
where I sold over $330,000 uh, in one hour. Uh, yes, you heard that right, $330,000 in one hour. And I owe a lot of it uh, to Dave D and the systems that he puts together. You see, Dave, uh, he says he's the master of one-to-many selling, um, and that's not hype. He actually is. If you can follow his systems and his templates and blueprints, um, you can create an incredible presentation uh, that will close like nobody's business. Um, I have followed Dave's advice. Um, I've followed his templates. And I put together a presentation that, yes, last week sold me over $330,000. Um, so I want to say thanks to Dave uh, because without his systems, I don't think I would have come very close. So again, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Have a good one. Okay, so the point of me showing you this stuff is not, oh, how great Dave is. It's that what I'm about to share with you works. So let's get it to work so we can put money in your pocket. Ready? Let's start taking some notes. Here are, three keys to, here are the three major pieces to creating a webinar or a presentation that you're going to do in your office or that you're going to do uh, at a restaurant or you're going to do a little workshop wherever you're going to do it. Here are the three pieces and we're going to go over each one of these. Number one is a riveting opening. You have to grab your audience's attention and I'm going to share with you how to do that. Number two, and this is where almost everybody messes this up, so we're going to spend some time on this, is delivering content that sells. I used to say this is the teaching section, but that gives everybody the wrong idea. Delivering content that sells. The third thing is the close. What do you do to book the appointment after they watch your webinar or after they watch your, your speech? Okay, so let's talk about the riveting opening. How to grab your audience by the throat and get them to love you. Right? So we've got to grab their attention. And the way to grab your audience's attention is to get them engaged. And the way to get your audience engaged is to ask them questions. Right? And get them to respond. So, okay, I'm going to do something like really weird that I normally don't do. <laughs> and it could totally mess up my sales, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'm going to take you behind the scenes about everything that I'm doing as I do it. Is that cool? <laughs> all right, so, okay, um, all right. And I've been doing it throughout the entire time as the MC. If you guys notice where your energy level was when you first came in and your participation level, it was a lot lower, right? So, what you need to do, what I've been doing is I've been asking you questions. I've been getting you to raise your hand. I've been getting you to, to say, Mike got you to say boom, I've been getting you to say, oh yeah, right. Now, the, there's many reasons for that, okay, so I'm, I'm like taking it behind the scenes now, All right, this is not on the slides. <laughs> Number one, it gets you actively involved, and even though I have to be kind of an ass in the beginning, like come on guys, come on, do it, do it, do it. It's because I have to get you to do it. If you don't get your audience to respond when you ask them to respond, you're going to be in trouble. And here's why. There's something called, I'm really giving it to you now. It's something called compliance. So if I can get you to do what I ask you to do when I ask you to do it during my entire presentation, right? What I'm actually doing is, in some ways, taking control of your responses. If I can take control of your responses, at the end, when I say, stand up, go to the back of the room, get the form, fill out the form, more people will do it, a lot more people will do it, because you've been following me the entire time. Does that make sense to everybody? What does that make sense? See, I just did it again. Right? So there's many different ways to do it. So what you're doing, by the way, I want to point out one thing, one thing here. That we're not trying to, we're not doing this stuff to manipulate people into buying our stuff, buying stuff that's not going to help them. Our goal is to help people, help them solve their problems, help them grow their businesses. What you guys do is so important. If their technology goes down, they lose money. They lose money. They, can't, they may not be able to make payroll. 
You guys have a moral obligation. I'm going to, this is not another slide, but I'm just going off topic. You have a moral obligation to close the sale. So, and I can guarantee you almost everybody in here has a story. Uh, they talked to a client. The client didn't uh, buy your service, didn't buy their service. Then something happened, and then they're screwed. You know, a lot of businesses can't go a couple days without sales. So you guys, what you're doing is so mission critical to the business community and to people's lives. So that we've, we've got to do this stuff. We're not doing it to manipulate them. We're doing it to influence them. Write this down. The difference between manipulation and persuasion is intent. The difference between manipulation and persuasion is intent. You would not be here if your intent was not to serve. You would not be in this community if your intent was not to serve. Let's just serve more people and serve them better. And by doing so, we enrich our lives, we enrich their lives, we enrich their family lives, we enrich their employees' lives. All right. So, you ask questions for a number of reasons. One, it gets them engaged. How do you do it on a webinar? Same thing. If you agree, type a yes into the chat box. So if you know a webinar, if anyone's watched a webinar, there's, there's, there's chat. They can type a yes into the chat box. You can do polling with them to get them involved in the presentation. So the first thing you do is you ask them questions. The questions should focus on the outcome that they desire and the pain that they're feeling, or in many of your cases, because you're selling prevention, the pain that they will be feeling if they don't take action on what you ask them to do. So the next thing you do is you future pace them. You future pace them in two different ways, again using pain and pleasure. We're motivated by two forces, pain and pleasure. Pain is a more motivating force. If you are selling prevention, which most of you are selling prevention, Right? You've got to see the hearse pulling up to the door. You've got to make them see the hearse pulling up. So you've got to paint the ugliest scenario possible for them. So Barbara, who I cannot believe Barbara's not here, but Barbara who came to my home for a day, she paid me uh, $9,000 for a day to help me revamp her presentation. We talked, we, she was like very reluctant to do this. But, man, I wish she was here. <laughs> but she's just crushing it now because this is the power. So we paint the ugly vision, but then we also paint the other vision of how great and confident and at ease they're going to be. And their systems are all running beautifully. Right? So opening questions. Part two is future, it's called future pacing. Most speakers only future pace in one way. They only future pace the beauty. No, no, you want to future pace the pain as well. The next piece is, and I just did it, I just did the piece, why should I listen to you? And this is where you tell your core story. You've heard Robin mention it over and over and over and over again about telling your core story. Your core story is so important. And I don't have time here to go through how to develop a core story. But in the program that you're going to get, it goes over that in detail. And you're going to use your core story everywhere. The next thing is your USP, your unique selling proposition. Why should I listen to you as opposed to anybody else? Why should I hire your company to do my IT, to protect me, or whatever you're doing. Why? Okay? So, your opening. Grab their, that's all in the opening, you guys. Grab their attention. Number two, answer. Get them to answer questions. Number three, future pace. And then number four, let them know why they should listen to you by telling them your core story. All right? The next piece is content that sells. What not to do in this section, and this, when I work with Barbara, when, when she came, when, when Barbara came, this is a part that we spent the most time on. And this is a part of your presentations 
that, so I want you to listen to me very carefully. This is the part that messes you up, right, and, and reduces sales. What not to do is teach too much. When you teach too much, you give the illusion that, first of all, you're, with what you guys do, the business owner doesn't want to know about it. They don't want to know about the nitty-gritty details. You guys might be into it and think it's really cool shit, right? We don't care, right? We just want the stuff to work, all right? So don't get into the nitty-gritty details and don't be boring. Here is the secret. Here is the secret. The secret is to cover what I call the big three. Break your presentation down into three chunks of information. Now, let's take a step back. Look at what I'm doing right now, right? I say, okay, so we're going to talk about the beginning, the middle, and the end of your presentation, right? And here is the key. Tell them what to do, not how to do it. Tell them what to do, not how to do it. Or give them, this is on the slide, I'm going to give you a little bit more. Give them useful but incomplete information. So let's take a step back now and behind the scenes, right? This is exactly what I'm doing to you, with you, <laughs> right? I'm giving you useful but incomplete information. So I just did, the, I'll give you an exact example. Again, this may be killing me, but I, I want you to get it, really understand it. I said to you, you need to develop a core story. Core story is mission critical. Here's why it's mission critical. But what did I not tell you how to do? how to actually create it. So guess what? In the program that I'm selling you, guess what I'm, one of the modules is going to be? This is like killing my clothes, just so you know, you guys, because you're gonna be like, yeah, you already told us all that shit, all right? Right, so exactly. What to do, not how to do it. First of all, they don't want to know how to do it. They can't do it themselves, right? So tell them what to do, not how to do it. Give useful but incomplete information and be entertaining. One of the keys to being entertaining is you can actually just make your slides entertaining. Even if you're the most boring person on the planet, funny slides, I guarantee you there's a slide coming up that'll make everybody laugh, right? So you don't have to be a comedian, but being entertaining is important. Don't be a teacher. Let me ask you a question. Who makes more money, teachers or entertainers? <laughs> be entertaining, be entertaining, okay. so. The three keys to success. Number one, a riveting opening. We've covered that. Number two, deliver content that sells. Number three is the close. All right? So this is how we're going to get the appointment. How to be a closer without being salesy. All right? Word of warning. Stop. Write this down. Make a note of the next thing I'm about to tell you. All right? So everyone should write this down. Your entire presentation is a close. So write that down. Your entire presentation is a close. Right. Now, let me just take a step back. Okay, I'm still doing all that compliance stuff with you. Now, you should write it down because it's valuable information. But do you see how I'm doing this? And this is how I'm keeping you engaged. Like, I'm looking around. There's a few people on their phones. Not a lot. Not a lot. Right? Because they're engaged. So, here's what you do. But not, we're gonna, your entire presentation is a close. Everything you say, everything you do leads to the end. So, in order for us to lead to the end, we need to, as the late Stephen Covey said, begin with the end in mind. And here are the questions to answer. Number one, what is my Godfather offer? Now, this is a little bit different than the Godfather campaign. Uh, it just happens that we're using the same language, Robin and I. But what is my godfather offer? You have to create an irresistible offer. Next is what are the benefits that your prospect are going to achieve by acting on your offer immediately? So what are the benefits they're going to achieve by acting on your offer right away? There's got to be a reason for them to take action now to not wait. The next thing is, um, what objections do they have? You have to answer all of the objections during your presentation. Because, especially in a webinar, they can't ask you, especially if it's a recorded webinar, 
right? They can't ask you the questions. So you've got to answer them. Okay, now I'm going to, let me tell you one of the ways that I've done that with you already. So I know when I get to my clothes, and I'm actually going to walk you through the clothes, just so you know, as I'm doing it. This is, we'll see what happens there. Um, is I know for some people, price is going to be an issue. They're going to say, man, I really want that, but it costs too much. So who remembers how I handled that objection? I've, right, what would you have? Right now, it's not 279. It's way more than 279. Yes, but the story, that's exactly right, sir. You nailed it. That's exactly 100% right. I planted, I was just going to jump off the stage. I, I, <laughs> I get excited about this stuff. Um, I planted the answers in your mind. Now, if you don't have the objection, that seed will not sprout. But if you do have the objection, God, I really want to get this thing, but it costs too much, what will pop into your mind is the story of Jim Rohn saying, successful people invest in themselves and their education. So there's ways to embed. Now, that's a whole different ball game, right? Then if I said, that's a whole different ball game than if, if you said to me, it costs too much, and I said, well, you know, what's your name? I'm sorry. Anna. Anna. You know, Anna, successful people invest in themselves and in their education. And if you want to be successful, right? Right, that puts up the, that puts up the barrier, because now you're preaching. By answering the objection in the context of a story, it flies by the radar. Flies by the radar. Okay. All right. And then the next thing is what do they need to do in order to take advantage of your offer? Again, you need to tell people specifically what you want them to do. You'll see me do it. I'm going to say, stand up. Go to the back of the room. There'll be people with forms back there. Take the form. Fill it out like this. You need to tell them exactly what you want them to do. If you want them to book an appointment, you need to tell them exactly how to do it. And I mean exactly. Any ambiguity will kill you. Okay, so here's the thing. Even if you're offering a free consultation, which most of you will be, you still need to sell it. You still need to sell it. Just because it's free doesn't mean that they're going to take you up on it. You still need to give all the benefits, all of the reasons you still need to close. Okay, so let's just do a quick review. So far, you've discovered what an opening of a one-to-many presentation must accomplish. You've also discovered the importance of delivering content that sells and the key elements of a successful close. But I want you to get this one thing. Having a one-to-many sales presentation, whether you decide to do it in person or whether you decide to do it as a webinar, record a webinar, it is a game changer. It is a new way for you to convert leads into appointments. By the way, how many of you have an e emails right now of leads that are not clients? Put together a webinar, send them to the webinar. You'll get clients instantly. You'll get appointments instantly. I mean, that's the lowest hanging fruit on the planet, right? The next thing is, this is a huge opportunity for you to gain a huge, massive competitive advantage because your competitors aren't doing it or they're not doing it well because they don't have this kind of training. And the next thing is it's a new way to generate leads. Here's why. One of the best things that you can do is drive people to a webinar. It's got a high perceived value. Everyone, you know, guys know Lead Generation Magnet. I know Robin's taught you that. But a webinar is got the, it's way better than a white paper because they get to hear you. They get to see you. Right, it's got a high perceived value. Okay, so now we have the appointment. Now we have to turn that prospect into a client. So imagine, if you will, imagine you had a magic wand and you could actually control someone's thoughts. Just imagine it for a second. And you could really know what they're thinking. All right? And you could get them to trust you within minutes of meeting you. 
and you could close sales with zero resistance. Would that be, would, would you make more money if you could literally do that stuff? You guys are like fired up. All right, so here we go. So if you listen carefully, you take notes, um, I'm going to share with you how to do it, okay? So now we're going to get into uh, stuff that can be very manipulative. So I'm going to have you answer some questions. Number one, do you have an, do you have an excellent service? You give me an oh yeah? Okay. Number two, uh, it, it, by the way, if you're not answering yes to these questions, all right, <laughs> Uh, if someone needs your service, do you believe that they should get it from you as opposed to one of your competitors? Okay. Do you believe that you can help, this is old Zig Ziglar saying, you can get everything in life that you want if you just help enough other people get what they want? That's true, right? That is what professional selling is. That's what it is. It's not about manipulation and making people like being a used car salesman or a snake oil salesman. It's got nothing to do with that. Okay, so did you answer all of these questions honestly? Okay, then I want you to say this. Give me a hell yeah, son. Hell yeah, son. Give me a hell yeah, son. hell yeah, son. Fantastic. And again, it's your moral obligation to do so. Now, I already did this because I got fired up. The difference between manipulation and persuasion is intent. Okay. So now this is, if you've got salespeople or you're doing the sales yourself, take really copious notes here because what I'm about to show is a transformation. This is not an improvement in your selling. This is a transformation in how you're going to close and how much money you're going to make. Okay, so here is the deal. So the first thing I want you to do is figure out what your profits are. Just think about what your profits are, and I want you to add 20% to that. So what your profit is from, from last year, and add 20% to that, and write that number down. Okay? Everybody should be writing. Right? The next thing is, if you did 50% more in profit, forget income. We don't care about income. Profit. Profit. 50% more profit. What would that do? What would that number be? Next question is, what is if you had doubled your profit? Okay, what is if you had doubled your profit? I can tell you absolutely, whatever that number is, absolutely, let's just take the smallest number of 20%. No freaking question beyond a shadow of a doubt, if you do what I'm about to tell you to do, you will increase your sales by 20%. And as we talked about, when you increase your sales, it doesn't cost you any more money. You're meeting with the same amount of prospects, right? So you're not increasing your marketing expense. All you're doing is you're closing 20% more of them. 20% is a freaking joke if you learn what I'm about to share with you. Okay, so here are the three Ps. Programming, preconditioning, and presentation. Programming, now we're talking about, okay, we've done our webinar, right? We've done our, we've done our platform presentation. We've booked appointments. Now we're going in for the consultation. So how do we now, how do we do this? Okay, so the first thing is programming. Remember this, selling is a transference of emotion. How you feel about what you're doing and about what you're offering makes a major impact on how your audience, how your prospect feels about it. Right? So if you're nervous about selling, here's what happens. If you're nervous about selling, they take that as that you, they don't understand, they just feel nervousness. They don't see that, they think, well, this guy's not very confident in his product. So we've got to program our mind for success. We've got to program our mind for confidence and power. And so when we present, I mean, I think most of you would think I believe in my shit, right? Yeah. I'm a pretty confident, right? Because I do. But there's something that I do backstage before I come out, and I'm going to share it with you now. And if you, honestly, if you're leaving now, you're going to miss like one of the most important things. I'm not, I'm not bullshitting you, okay? Putting yourself into a peak state will increase your sales just by 20%. Here's how you do it. By the way, this is an attorney I taught it to. 
You guys think that you're uptight? Right? Attorneys? Right? Here it is. I want everybody to stand up. Stand on up. We're going to do this. We're going to program your mind right now. We're going to program your mind right now for success. This is called anchoring. This is called anchoring. Uh, a negative example of anchoring is you're driving home late one night. You've had a nice night out. It's a beautiful night. All of a sudden, there's flashing blue lights and sirens. What happens? You experience a change, right? A state change, right? But now, because what happened is there was a something unique triggered something inside you. And that's because of a bad experience that you've had in the past with it. But we can do it positively. We can anchor ourselves positively to positive emotions. And here's the key to it. Number one, you have to get yourself into a peak emotional state. And then, at the peak of that state, you create an anchor. Now, you can create your own. I'm going to show you the one that I do. And then you're going to do it. And I, you'll see the difference. I do this every single time before I walk out on stage. And this guy did it every single time. Now, you don't do this in front of your clients, by the way. Okay? Okay? But here's, here's what I do, then I'm going to have you do it. Now, I've been doing this for probably 15 years, so my anchor is set. Right? So I'm going to do it, and then we're going to do it. Then we're, yours won't be set. We're going to set yours now. Okay? So here's what I do. I do this backstage. I'm the best, 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 I'm the best. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes! Okay, so then I come out on stage. Then I come out. Now, do you notice a change in my state? Right? Right? And I'm not acting. This is like anchored in. So can you imagine if I walked out like this? Okay, guys, so I'm going to teach you how to close some sales today. And, right? No. Okay. So I want to get this anchored into you so you can experience it. This, I'm telling you, if you teach this to your team, you do this, it'll, it is a game changer. All right? So here's what I want you to do. Everyone get into, put your arms down, shake it out. Okay? And I want you to breathe the way you'd be breathing if you felt totally confident, if you felt totally powerful, if you felt totally engaged, like you were just on top of the world. Remember a time and breathe that way. How would you be breathing? What would you be saying to yourself in your head? What would you be saying? Breathe that way. Your hands wouldn't be behind your back. What would you, how would you be, move, move a little bit. Just move a little bit like you're totally confident, totally powerful. And then at the height of it, start rubbing your hands. Get, get more and more confident, more and more confident. And then say, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best. Say it, best, the best, the best, the best. And then, yes! Okay, now get out of state. Get out of state. Shake it off. Okay? All right? Now, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay, so now I want you to get into that mental state. Remember, you got to do it at the height. So start rubbing your hands together. Get yourself more and more and more confident. More and more powerful. Feel more confident. Feel more powerful. Feel like you're just on fucking top of the world. Right? They, they, you, and just, I'm the best. 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 Yes! Do it again. Yes! 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 How do you feel right now? Sit on down. Do you think, do you think that if you, if you had that power that you would close more sales? 20% a joke. Okay. Here's, we're going to have to go through this quickly. Here's the pyramid. The pyramid is upside down. Every other sales trainer on the planet talks about the close. Oh, the 101 closes. How many of you guys don't like selling? Seriously, you don't like it. The reason you don't like it is because of all the creepy ass techniques that make you feel like a used car salesman, right? It's not that you don't like selling. It's that you don't like the creepiness of it. The close, although important, is a minor piece of the puzzle. The stuff that you see at the top is the important part. So let's go through it. 
The first phase is when you initially meet with your prospect. You initially meet with your prospect. What you want to do is what's called preconditioning the yes. Preconditioning the yes. By the way, everything I'm about to tell you and I have told you is scientifically proven. This isn't woo-woo stuff. Not a woo-woo guy. I need stuff that works that puts money in my pocket. Okay, so do you. All right, so Daniel Howard from SMU University, they did this, a little test. And they had telemarketers. And the telemarketers, there was two sets of telemarketers. The first set of telemarketers did this preconditioning, getting a positive affirmation, like getting a yes at the very beginning of the phone call. The other set of telemarketers didn't. Other than that, the scripts were exactly the same. Right, so they, they were calling people saying that they were the, from, from the hunger relief committee, trying to raise money. Okay, here's what happened. Half of the researchers did what I'm about to share with you, the other half did not. 32% accepted the offer compared to just 18% in the group that did not get the positive affirmation. So you want to train your prospects to say yes at least five to seven times before you start your presentation. At least five to seven times before you start your presentation. Now, how do you do that? It's very simple. Let's, uh, let's just come here. All right. Hi, your name is? Ed, Ed. so this is Ed. Ed, let's say that you have, what, what is your business, Ed? Managed service providers. Managed service providers. And so um, let's, let's say I'm you, okay. okay, and you're me. And I'm coming in because I need some managed service provider stuff, okay? All right. So I come in, and let's say we know, I know your appointment's at 2 o'clock, all right, and that you've seen one of my webinars, all right? and that you know that I am in the training business, sales training business, okay? All right, so I could say, hey, you must be Ed. Yes, I am. Right, and, and Ed, we have a two o'clock appointment, don't we? Yes, we do. Yes, we do, okay, all right. Oh, and, I see, and you watch one of my webinars, that's why you're here, isn't that right? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was great, okay. Oh, and Ed, um, uh, from, from your application, that from, from the application you filled out for this consultation, I see that you're in the speaking training business. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Do you see? It's easy. It doesn't matter what the questions are. Thank you. It doesn't matter what the questions are. You just keep getting them to say yes, 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 yes throughout your presentation. Guys, guys. What the hell exercise did we just do? Yes, yes, yes. Now I'm taking you behind the scenes, okay? All right. Is this cool stuff or is this cool stuff? All right, oh yeah, okay. So, so we've preconditioned the yes. The next thing that we do is this. 80% of all sales are based on the customer liking and trusting you. Not based on your product, not based on your service, not based on how many years you've been in business, on them liking and trusting you. Now, if you speak, if you do the first part of this, either with a webinar or in person, you're already way ahead of the game. If not, or even if, you're still going to do this. So here's how you develop rapport. There's many different techniques. Obviously, I don't have time to go over all of them. Right, But at the end, when you all get up and go to the back and invest, you're going to get all of them. Okay? So when people are like each other, they tend to like each other. When people are like each other, they tend to like each other. And people trust people who they believe truly understand them. So if I can get you to believe that I truly understand you on a very deep level you're going to like and you're going to trust me. And one of the best ways to get people to read people so they truly understand that they like you and that they trust you is with something called cold reading. So when I say I was a professional magician, that's not 100% true. 
I was a professional mentalist. Most people don't know what a mentalist is, so I use magician. Mind reader. So I did corporate shows. One of the techniques that we use, so there's two types of, uh, quote, psychics, okay? The first type of psychic is what is called a shut eye. A shut eye is someone who truly believes that they are psychic. Then there's the guys that make all the money, okay? And the guys that make all of the money are using technique. There's books and trainings on this. So you know that guy, uh, what's his name? The guy who talks to the dead? Uh, yeah, John Edwards. Let me give you, I don't want to burst anybody's bubble. He ain't talking to the dead. Okay? Actually, he is. They're just not talking back. Okay? So, <laughs> right? He's using something called cold reading. Cold reading. It is a set of techniques. Now, what I've done is I've boiled them down to 10 statements. So you don't have to be, we're not turning you into fortune tellers, right? This is all designed to get people to say, wow, this person really understands me and knows me on a very, very, very deep level, right? So there's 10 of these. I call them magic because they're magic when you use them. I'm going to I'm gonna give you two of them so you can take it and use it. This is a great one for you guys. That's why I picked it. At times you've had serious, so write this down, at times you've had serious doubts as to whether you made the right decision or you've done the right thing. Right? So you're going to say this during your presentation. Your prospect will immediately say, now by the way, you're not going to do it like looking at their palm. You're just going to say, you know what, in talking to you, I sense that at times you've had serious doubts about whether you've made the right decision or you've done the right thing. Is that right? Number one, they have to answer yes, because who's going to answer no to that? But if, if I did this with you and I wasn't explaining it to you, you're not thinking, oh, wait a minute, he's doing cold reading, right? You're thinking, well, yeah, that's absolutely right. How, yes, this guy understands me. By the way, when you use all 10, they're like, they think like they've known you for years, like you're their best friend. The next one is, you pride yourself on being an independent thinker and don't accept other people's opinions without satisfactory proof. So I could say to you, you know, Bob, I sense that you pride yourself on being an independent thinker and you really don't accept other people's opinions, what they say, without satisfactory proof. Is that right? Well, what idiot is going to say, well, no, I just believe anything anybody tells me. Right? They're going to say yes. And then you're going to say, well, that's why I want to show you all of these clients who we've helped. Because they're going to tell my story far better than I could tell my story. That's way better than saying, hey, let me show you some testimonies and tell you some case studies. Your prospect, you do all ten of these. And you just sprinkle them throughout. And they're simple. They're not hard to remember. They're simple. You sprinkle these throughout, your prospect says, my, this person, I like this person, I trust this person, this person really, truly understands me, like really understands me, I'm going to buy from this person. Because 80% of all sales are based on the customer liking and trusting the salesperson. Okay? All right. So, now, we have, we've done uh, our rapport building. This is all in the meat phase. Right? We've done our rapport building. We've got them to say yes, 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 yes. We've got them into a yes mindset. We've continued that. They, they like us. They trust us. The next thing is the discovery phase. The discovery phase. Now, because you guys are all professionals and you know your business really well, odds are you already know what the prospect needs. Right? And you want to jump right to the solution. Because you already know it. You've seen it a bazillion times. Right? But you can't do that. The prospect wants you to ask questions. And so here is what you're going to do. You've got to get inside your prospect's head to discover what they really want. And write down, discover what they really want and put circles around want, put stars next to want. People buy what they want. What is the, um, so I'm going to, it's not on the screen, but I want to give this to you too. Let me just check my time. I want to give this to you too. It's called the hierarchy of persuasion. It's at the lowest level of the hierarchy of persuasion, and you won't hear this anywhere else but here. 
At the lowest level of the hierarchy of persuasion are features. So features are like the stuff that a lot of you, a lot of people like to talk about. Right? They don't care about that. The next level are benefits. That's like selling one-on-one. Features and benefits. Features and benefits. You do have to tell them about the features. They do need to know about the benefits, but that's not the... The next level up is the outcome. So let me give you an example for my business. You buy my program, right? The, the features are there's going to be um, an online course. You're going to get videos. You're going to get scripts. You're going to get a whole bunch of great stuff. Those are all features. The benefit is that you are going to increase your sales. You're going to make a lot more sales. You're going to generate more A-list clients, so on and so forth. Okay? The outcome is that you're going to make more money. Right? See the difference between features, benefits, outcomes? Most people never get to outcomes. The highest level, though, is transformation. Transformation. How am I going to be different? How is this going to make me different and improved emotionally? Selling is based on emotion. No one gets to this level. Right? So, for my example is you're going to make more money, great. What does that mean? Well, that means you're going to have more freedom, right? You're not going to wake up. You're not going to be worried about where your next client is coming from. You're going to have mental freedom. You're going to be able, you'll be able to be present with your children. So instead of thinking about your business while they're playing soccer, you'll actually be present with them as opposed to having your mind elsewhere. You'll be able to take your spouse on that dream trip you've always thought about. That's transformation. That's where selling gets to. That's where selling really happens. And no one gets to that level. But if you get to that level, closing the sale is easy. Okay? What their psychic wounds are. Their psychic wounds are everyone has, depending upon their personality type, and their four major personality types, <clears throat> has something so that is... If you don't maneuver and, and, and address the, this psychic wound that they have, it's a, it's a deep thing, right? So, for example, one of them is Mr. Go-Along with the crowd. So Mr. Go-Along with the crowd, his psychic wound is he needs to feel like he belongs, right? And so you have to show him how about you've got to talk about community. You've got to talk about all of that kind of stuff. You've got Mr. Boss. Mr. Boss has a completely different psychic wound. Now, Mr. Boss may want community, but if you start talking about community, or if you have Mr. Fun-loving, which is another one, right? Mr. Fun-loving wants things to be fun. You talk to Mr. Boss, like, can you imagine, like, go, go, talking to Robin and, like, being, hey, this is going to be super fun. It, 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 she'd bite your friggin' head off, right, if you're trying to sell her something. She wants to know she's the boss, right? So you got to discover what their psychic wounds are, and you got to discover how they like to be sold. So here are three key questions. What's most important? Write these down, okay? What, what's most important to you in blank? So what's most important to you when you think about whatever it is? And I can't do it for everybody because everybody's got different businesses. I mean, you're all in the IT business. I get that. But you understand, right? So what's most important to you when you think about getting, okay? Next thing is, what's important to you about that? Well, okay, so as I understand, that's really important to you. What's most important to you about that? See, what we want to do is we want to dig deeper and deeper and deeper. The third question you ask them is this. To make sure I clearly understand, ultimately, what would, ultimately, what would, then whatever the prospect said, you, use, you repeat back their exact answer to question number two. Because words have power. Their words have meaning to them. Their words have emotion to them. So you don't paraphrase it. You repeat it back. Okay? What would that, ultimately, what would that do for you? That's how you get to, okay, so let's just take, again, my example. Okay, so what would um, making more sales, what's most important to you when you think about uh, increasing your sales? Well, you know, if I increase my sales, we'd be making a lot more money. The business would be really stable. And so, well, what's important to you about having a really stable business? I mean, why are you really doing this? Well, man, I'm really doing this because, you know, I, I, I want to have, I want to send my kids to the best colleges on the planet. 
I mean, that's something that I want. I, that's what I really want. Okay, so to make sure I clearly understand, ultimately what you're looking for then is not just money. What you're looking for is the ability to send your kids to the best college on the planet, right? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. They're, they're about ready to cry, right? And buy, right? So now, of course, there's more to it than just this, but I want to give you stuff that you can take and use. Next thing is prescribe. Okay, this is where you're going to prescribe their solution. You can't skip over the discovery phase, though. You got to go, you got to talk about it, even if you know what the answer is. I know what the answer is. I, I, gotta, I work on this myself because I talk, you know, okay, here, here's the answer. No, no, they want to tell you their story. The prescribe phase, okay? How you prescribe the solution is just as important as what the solution is, okay? Your prospect needs to accept your solution as the very, very best solution to their problem. And you can do that by using hypnotic language, right? So hypnotic language is something that bypasses conscious thought and goes directly into their subconscious. And I'm going to give you two things that you can use, and then we're going to take a step back, and I'll show you how I've been doing it, okay? All right. So getting subconscious agreement, two words you can use. They're L-Y words, the word naturally and the word obviously. So if I say the word naturally, now there's more L-Y words, but naturally and obviously are two good ones. If I say the word naturally to start a sentence and nod my head slightly, every one of you will agree with me. Because what happens is that's how we are programmed. So naturally... It happens. So I've said, so obviously, I can't share everything with you in 90 minutes. Okay? Naturally, you want to learn all 10 of these cold reading statements. Okay? An example from, let's just take an example from insurance. So you, this is like, this is the kind of stuff that makes me cringe and makes you cringe and makes you think why you don't like sales. Well, the security of your family is important to you, Mr. Jones, isn't it? Right? It makes me want to vomit. Right? But if I say, naturally, Mr. Jones, the security of your family is important to you. Do you see the difference? It's not being manipulative. Well, it, it, right? It's not, it's not being perceived that way. Okay? But again, remember, you guys answered all those questions. I have a great product and service. I'm the person that should help them solve their problem. I can get everything in life I want if I can get it, just help enough other people. This is helping getting them what they want, okay? So now the final phase is the close. The close is easy. You do need to close, but the close is easy. I'm going to give you one of my fancy closes, okay? You're going to want to write this down. But you don't need any pressure, all right? They're going to want what they're going to want it. They're going to like you. They're going to trust you. If you've done all of this, I'm thinking about this. Now I hope, hopefully you can see that obviously 20% sales increase if you did all of this is a joke, isn't it? Okay, um, so you're going to say, uh, here I teach eight different ones, but here's my favorite one. Ready? This is tricky. So I've done everything. I say, right, you're going to want to write this down. This is, you probably can't memorize this. So what do you think? <laughs> if you've done all of the other stuff, so, by the way, just so you guys know, I close $25,000, $50,000 uh, one call on the telephone, set up with a consultation, and that's my close. So, what do you think? How do we get started? <laughs>